What's up, Brian Tong here with your Google Licious for everything Google Week can pack inside of a show. There's lots to talk about, and we start off with a new Telegraph report that says Google is planning to release its own Google branded smartphone that will compete directly with the iPhone. We've heard rumblings about this over five months ago that Google wanted a more integrated Apple like experience for their Nexus phone line. Now, at the moment, Google develops the Android software, but unlike Apple, it partners with a rotation of manufacturers each year for the Nexus phone hardware. The new device is expected to be released by the end of 2016, according to their sources, and we'll see Google take more control over design, manufacturing, and software. It's really just an example where Google wants to be more like Apple, and then there's the other times where Apple wants to be more like Google. But don't worry, Google has stated it's not going to just stop supporting the Nexus phone line. For example, an Android police report says Google is working on a live support app for Nexus devices. It's tentatively called Google Support, and think of it as Amazon's Mayday help service, but for Nexus products. Google's app reportedly also has the ability to share your screen with an agent on the other end, so I would just make sure you clean out your photo library before you set up a uh, help session. All right, the Googs may also be redesigning Android's home and navigation buttons again, according to Android Police. This image is believed to be the next stock navigation bar in Android N that we might see released with the new phones. And speaking of new phones, specs for the next gen Nexus phones manufactured by HTC this year have also been leaked out. Android Police reports two phones with a 5 inch and 5.5 inch screen sizes and the code names Sailfish and Marlin. Now, Sailfish is the 5 inch phone according to the report with a rumored 5 inch. 1080p display, a quad core 2 gigahertz 64 bit processor, and a hefty 4 gigs of RAM. But we expect to officially hear about these new models this fall in the September October timeframe. Now, in other hardware, Evan Blass is back at it again on his Twitter EvLeaks account after he revealed the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 has been confirmed, indicating a jump from the Note 5 to the Note 7 name to catch up with the entire Galaxy product line. Now, the Note 7 will come with the long rumored Iris scanner and EvLeaks confirmed specs with a 5.7 inch screen, quad HD Super AMOLED display with 64 gigs of storage, and an additional micro SD card slot and more. Now, it will also bring IP68 water resistance, even with a slot for the Samsung pen. That's pretty slick. It's expecting to release potentially on August 2nd for another one of Samsung's unpacked events. And in other Google bits and pieces, a new collaboration with Stanford, IDEO, and Google will bring a new project that makes learning how to code a whole lot easier for kids. It's a new open hardware platform that allows young leans to build physical coding experiences called Project Blocks, and that's blocks with no C in it. Of course it is. Now the system is made of three core hardware components, and Google notes that kids naturally learn to build with their hands and collaborate with others. Project Blocks is looking for participants who want to take part of this study, so check out the website if you want to find out more. Also at VidCon last week, YouTube announced it's bringing live streaming capabilities directly to its YouTube apps on iOS and Android. You'll be able to see audience numbers and metrics with a live chat happening at the same time where people keep telling you to take your top off. Now select YouTube partners are getting it and the feature will continue to roll out more widely over time. And finally, Google Earth and the satellite layers in Maps are getting a huge boost with sharper and more detailed images thanks to the Landsat 8 satellite. It was launched in 2013 and it captures images with greater details, truer colors, and even more frequency. Now, you can see the difference in this comparison between the old data and the new imagery. That's pretty. Now, Google calls it its freshest global mosaic to date. It looks really impressive and it's definitely worth checking out. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.